Picture this, it's a cozy evening, the soft glow of the television casting a warm, inviting spell on your living room. You sink into your favorite armchair, perhaps with a bowl of popcorn in hand. And then it happens, the opening chords of a familiar tune. It's 1971, and the TV screen flickers to life with the iconic introduction of All in the Family. For a moment, you're transported back in time, reminiscing about your first encounter with this groundbreaking series. Maybe it was Archie Bunker's unfiltered rants that left you in stitches, or perhaps you found solace in the witty banter between him and his wife, Edith. It could have been the show's daring approach to tackling societal issues head-on, making you question the norms of the era. As you reflect on these memorable moments, let's dive deeper into the world of All in the Family and uncover some random, fascinating facts about the show that forever changed the landscape of television. So, grab a seat and get ready for a journey through time and television history. All in the Family, a groundbreaking TV series that premiered in 1971, revolutionized American television and societal discourse. Created by Norman Lear, this sitcom was a fearless reflection of the changing times, tackling taboo subjects with wit and satire. At its heart were the iconic characters, Archie Bunker, a cantankerous but lovable bigot, and his wife, Edith, a warm-hearted counterbalance to his biases. The show's unique style lay in its ability to confront uncomfortable issues head-on, using humor as a vehicle for social commentary. Archie's confrontations with his liberal son-in-law, Mike Stivick, provided a platform for discussions on racism, sexism, and politics, all within the confines of a modest queen's home. All in the family became a cultural touchstone, challenging stereotypes, and sparking conversations about prejudice and inequality. Its impact on popular culture was immense, influencing future TV shows and paving the way for a more candid and socially conscious approach to entertainment. Norman Lear's creation remains a testament to the power of television to both reflect and shape the world around us, leaving an indelible mark on the medium and society as a whole, as a whole, as a whole. In the 1971 TV series All in the Family, Betty Garrett took on the role of Irene Lorenzo, a character who often clashed with Archie due to her liberal and tomboyish nature. What's intriguing about Garrett is her backstory. Before landing this role, she had faced a challenging period in her career. Back in the day, Senator Joseph McCarthy and the House on american Activities Committee had blacklisted her. They believed she had affiliations with the Communist Party. This made it tough for her to find work in Hollywood. However, All in the Family turned out to be a significant breakthrough for Garrett. She joined the show and became a memorable character. Interestingly, she left the series after her third year, only to return in the following season with an even bigger role. She portrayed Mrs. Babish on the number one rated sitcom, Laverne and Shirley. On another note, the nickname Meathead in the show was not a random choice. Norman Lear, the creator of All in the Family, had a personal connection to it. His father used to call him Meathead when he was a child, and Lear decided to give this nickname to Mike Stivick, played by Rob Reiner, as a character quirk. Lastly, a lesser known fact about the show is that the episode titled Edith's 50th Birthday was originally intended to be an episode of One Day at a Time. In this alternate storyline, Anne Romano from One Day at a Time was supposed to be the one celebrating her 50th birthday. However, the idea was eventually reworked for All in the Family. These tidbits add depth to the history of All in the Family and shed light on the personal connections and industry dynamics that shaped the show. In 1971, the groundbreaking TV series All in the Family hit the airwaves, bringing with it a host of interesting facts. One notable tidbit is that Carol O'Connor, who portrayed the iconic character Archie Bunker, was living in Italy when he was offered the role. O'Connor agreed to play Archie on one condition. If the pilot episode didn't get picked up, the producers had to foot the bill for his flight back to Italy. Another intriguing aspect of the show, as shared by Rob Reiner, who starred on All in the Family from 1971 to 1979, is its similarity to the later series Rose On. Both shows center around reactionary characters and tackle timely social issues. However, the key difference lies in the actors behind these characters. Carol O'Connor, a liberal actor, portrayed the reactionary Archie Bunker, whereas Rose On starred Rose On Barr as a reactionary character essentially playing herself. As for Archie Bunker's relationship with his wife Edith, he affectionately nicknamed her Dingbat. Furthermore, Archie had a unique way of pronouncing Edith's real name, 
Edith. All in the Family remains a significant part of television history, known for its bold approach to addressing important social issues through humor and unforgettable characters. And there you have it, some intriguing facts about the 1971 TV series All in the Family. Stay tuned for more fascinating insights into the world of entertainment. In 1971, the TV series All in the Family brought Archie Bunker, played by Carol O'Connor, into American living rooms. But here's a twist. Had Archie's character been killed off due to Carol O'Connor's contract dispute, the show's focus would have shifted to Archie's best friend, Stretch Cunningham, portrayed by James Cromwell. Stretch was supposed to move in with the Bunkers to look after Archie's family after his demise. However, when O'Connor's contract dispute was resolved, Stretch Cunningham made just two more appearances before being killed off in a later season at O'Connor's insistence. Understandably, lead actors don't typically want their understudies lingering around. Interestingly, around the same time, Cromwell narrowly missed out on another iconic role. He almost became B.J. Honeycutt on M.A.S.H., losing the part to Mike Farrell. This could have changed the dynamic of both shows significantly. But as fate would have it, both actors followed their unique paths in television history. Archie Bunker, however, remained at the center of all in the family, leaving an indelible mark on American television. And speaking of changes, in 1979, all in the family underwent a transformation, reformatting itself as Archie Bunker's place. This new iteration of the show continued to explore the life of the iconic character, Archie Bunker, as he operated a bar and grill. It was a bold move that allowed fans to follow Archie's journey in a different setting. In one memorable episode, Archie Bunker unknowingly issued a prophecy during an argument with the meathead in Kelsey's bar. In a heated exchange, the meathead walked out, and Archie yelled after him, You're gonna get Reagan in 1980, wise guy. Remarkably, this prediction turned out to be accurate, as Ronald Reagan was elected president in 1980. All in the Family was more than just a sitcom. It was a cultural touchstone, exploring important social issues with humor and wit. While the show almost took a different turn with Stretch Cunningham, it ultimately remained true to its roots and its impact on television history endures. All in the Family, a TV legacy in plain speak in a candid METV Legends interview, Isabel Sanford, famous for her role as Louise Jefferson in The Jeffersons, revealed that she felt coerced into joining the spin-off. Initially, when the producers of All in the Family proposed the idea of a spin-off, Sanford declined, preferring to stay with the show. However, the producers gave her an ultimatum, join the Jeffersons or be written out of All in the Family, and replaced in the spin-off. Sanford's decision was clear, she joined the Jeffersons. All in the Family, a groundbreaking sitcom, held the TV screens for 15 consecutive years. Alongside the original series, spin-offs like Maude, Good Times, The Jeffersons, Archie Bunker's Place, Checking In, and Gloria contributed to this remarkable run. The only exception was 704 Hosser, which didn't quite make the cut. CBS were run All in the Family during the day in 1975. But there was a catch. They trimmed three minutes from each episode to squeeze in more commercials. Norman Lear, the show's creator, offered to cover the lost commercial time expenses, but CBS declined. This edited version of the show became the standard for syndication on other stations for decades. It wasn't until the 1990s, when TV Land took over, that viewers got to see the uncut episodes, sometimes in 35-minute showings. And there you have it, some lesser known, yet intriguing facts about the iconic 1971 TV series, All in the Family. Whether it's coercive spin-off tactics, it's remarkable 15-year TV reign, or the editing drama during reruns, the show has left an indelible mark on television history. In history. In history. In history. All in the Family 1971 TV series, the unusual studio audience during its iconic run from 1971 to 1978. The TV series All in the Family brought humor and social commentary to American living rooms. While it's known for its groundbreaking themes, there are some lesser known facts about the show, particularly regarding its studio audience. Unlike many sitcoms of the time, All in the Family was taped in front of a live studio audience, creating a unique atmosphere for both cast and viewers. This practice continued for the first eight seasons, with the audience's laughter and reactions adding authenticity to the show. However, an interesting change occurred in the ninth season, which aired from 1978 to 1979. 
the producers decided to abandon the live studio audience during the taping process. Instead, they recorded each episode without immediate audience feedback. This was a significant departure from the show's previous format. But here's the twist. After taping the episodes, they would then be shown to a live studio audience. Their laughter and reactions were recorded and incorporated into the final cut. This innovative approach aimed to maintain the show's humor and timing despite the absence of a live audience during taping. As an interesting bonus, after the taping of Norman Lear's One Day at a Time, Carol O'Connor and Jean Stapleton, who portrayed Archie and Edith Bunker, would appear and perform the iconic theme song, Those Were the Days, live. Following this musical interlude, an episode of All in the Family was screened for the live audience's response. This explains the change in the voiceover heard during the end credits of the 1978-79 season, with O'Connor now saying, all in the Family was played to a studio audience for live responses. This unique approach to audience engagement demonstrated the show's adaptability and commitment to delivering quality entertainment. It also allowed All in the Family to maintain its distinctive blend of humor and social commentary throughout its successful run. So, while the show initially thrived with a live studio audience, it found a way to keep the laughs coming even without one. A testament to the creativity and dedication of the people behind this iconic series. Iconic series. Iconic. As we draw the curtains on this journey through the timeless 1971 TV series, All in the Family, I invite you to take a moment to reflect. This show wasn't just a sitcom, it was a mirror held up to society, reflecting its flaws and triumphs with unwavering honesty. All in the Family touched our hearts and challenged our beliefs. It brought us the unforgettable characters of Archie, Edith, Mike, and Gloria, who became more like family than fictional figures. The issues that tackled racism, sexism, politics, and generational divides are still relevant today. Perhaps you laughed at Archie's antics or found solace in Edith's warmth. Maybe you identified with the struggles of the Bunker family or learned valuable life lessons from their experiences. Whether it's the humor, the drama, or the social commentary, All in the Family left an indelible mark on its viewers. Now, it's your turn to share. What are your favorite memories of the show? How did it impact your life? Did it spark meaningful conversations or offer new perspectives? We'd love to hear your thoughts and stories about this iconic series that continues to resonate with generations. Thank you for taking this nostalgic trip down memory lane with us. Your time and interest are deeply appreciated. Together, we celebrate the enduring legacy of all in the family. Warm regards. Regards. Regards.